tectonic bodies and it's about basically creating natural forms and uh, something which is site responsive, something which reacts to site. Uh, our site was in Ancoat and our first, on our first session we kind of introduced the students to the site and gave them a brief background of um, this kind of architecture which includes like natural forms and things like that. Um, so they were all really enthusiastic, they were interested in it. Uh, they went off to site, they, find out, they found out what they were interested in. Um, the first group, uh, called Lotus Flower, they were interested in basically reviving the lost kind of city, the lost part of Ancoats, and bringing back the links that were there. And they found this really um, old mill that they were really interested in kind of bringing back to life. And the second group were interested in kind of weather and the canal and the kind of ripples which um, came from the canal. Um, so they looked at kind of representing that in a more architectural form. Um, so the first group that was the Lotus Flower group, they kind of produced this flower which um, uh, theoretically is supposed to include these kind of protocells which kind of like revive and heal the building over time. Event Crossing was called um, Hit Squad and the idea of it was that on the behalf of the MSSA we were going to enter a competition. Um, to, um, that was meant to promote uh, societies through, and the, the media of this doing was through YouTube. And the idea was that the, the whole goal is to get as many hits as possible. And the one that gets the most hits wins. And so we we wanted to ask students to try and, with that idea in mind, to try and make videos that represent architects, represent MSSA, and are likely to kind of videos that will go viral. Um, and then we and then we had a vid, and then we had a day of them going out filming, cutting, uh, filming, doing as much filming as possible. We didn't really see much on that day, though. We did try to track them down, but they got to all over the place. Um, and, and again, there was some amazing footage came out of that. <laughs> and then the final day was just to try and help them. Well, we're trying to get editing, but I have to say their skills editing were super, superior to ours by miles, and really impressive stuff came out of it. We sadly had to pick a final, a, a, a winner in the end to go enter into the competition, but I, I, it, it was so hard. We had the hardest hour trying to decide which one was the best, and it was... You know, a lot of arguments, but we got there in the end, but, and I think we're all happy. Basically, uh, we're aiming to um, provide first and second year students with tools, which are digital tools, um, uh, digital model making and um, uh, a bit of parametric design uh, for them to be able to create some uh, organic shapes and uh, manipulate them. Uh, by the end of the session, uh, we're aiming to produce three uh, physical models uh, Three um, designs and three physical models, yeah. uh, because the, the, the event is not just about designing things digitally, but also moving to the physical world. Because we, we talk in the, in the towards the digital builder event, it's about bringing those two elements back to the architect. Because over time, you can see now there's so much division labor. Architects actually push pushed aside. Now we want to. Put, uh, this event is about actually bringing that power to the architect now yeah. so through with different the help of those tools uh, hopefully we can regain that uh, if you like position the Manchester City surveyor called Roland Nicholas created a new master plan for Manchester and then in 1945 he published the City of Manchester plan which um, dealt with industry um, housing and transport in Manchester Basically what we are doing is we've asked our students to reimagine what Manchester in 2045 would look like but based on the needs of today. We will. We, I think the, the, the key skills we're getting them to do are sort of looking at master planning because, well, whilst it may have changed from when we were in sort of first and second year, it doesn't really form part of the, of the key sort of thinking. So to zoom out really and look at a whole city and, and, and we think that's sort of quite, quite a good skill a good challenge and it's quite engaging. So we're also getting them to have a little bit of fun and take those sort of realistic sort of grounded ideas and in some respects go sort of a bit. The project is to involve the students with a real life project that's going on with a real client and um, to get them to think about whether or not they want to be an architect because that is essentially partially why you're doing this degree. So that's the idea. We're going to visit lots of different architecture practices and see what's going on in Manchester and this live project will be used by them because um, it's going to become a business hub and a digital environment for students to use. So they're going to be designing their own space, which is quite exciting. I think, I think it's quite, what's quite interesting about the project is it's not just, uh, I mean, yes, it's a live project, but at the same time, we're introducing all the important characters that would be involved in an actual practice. Um, our event uh, looked at uh, exploring the idea of contemporary intervention within uh, existing fabric using a row of traditional terraced houses in Liverpool. 
Um, the event uh, explored this topic through the construction of a range of uh, physical models, starting with concept models, uh, exploring initial ideas, and progressing through uh, massing models, spatial models, and culminating with a set of final presentation models at the final session. Um, each of the students in the event took a different approach to the project, some exploring uh, the uh, economic issues in this area of Liverpool, some exploring the political aspects of the site, some of the environmental side of it, but all responded to the physical uh, existing environment um, with their new interventions and this relationship between new and old. And we've got a fantastic range of uh, proposals as a result. Uh, the name of our event is Pimp Your Studio, uh, inspired by the TV show Pimp Your Right, Pimp My Right. But, uh, we're basically making the students create furniture and installations for the new Chatham building using uh, materials that were salvaged from different construction sites and different uh, skips around the city. Um, and the idea is that they don't spend any money making the furniture, so we're not just upcycling the materials, but we're also reusing them in a way that uh, manipulates their properties to create a usable piece of furniture. So rather than restricting themselves by the designs, we're starting from a material point of view and thinking how we can use those materials to create a piece of furniture as opposed to the other way around. Um, so we've given them three different sites and three different target audiences, which they kind of came up with and we've gone with. Um, group 08 and we've been upcycling uh, furniture from the Wesley Community Furniture Project, which is charity in Mossside. Um, the project came about through um, MSAP projects by myself, Adam Shah and Sam Neil. We've been working on a project that um, has been using the uh, fur Wesley Furniture Centre as our client. Um, we moved that forward and used it as made a project out of it whereby the students in first and second year have been taking these projects um, and doing as much as they can with them. Yeah, some of the outcomes were brilliant taking them back to the Wesley now for them to be priced and um, valued and sold back to the community, which is ultimately the aim of uh, MSA projects. Um, and very impressed with everyone's hard work in the workshop. They've been crafting hard. We wanted to get the first and second years to explore their creative potential. They've all come from art and design backgrounds. Uh, and there's a slight danger that over time it kind of gets lost through detailing and orthographic drawing and such. So we wanted to bring that back and let them kind of realise the creativity they had. Um, and we were discussing how to do that and getting them to think about abstracting their image. And it spun off from that. We were talking about how far can we abstract an image? Can we produce something completely unintelligible for people? Um, or for them at least. But for someone else, maybe they can read into it a lot more. They can see some uh, kind of impressive architectural output through it. So the whole title of Can You Tell What It Is Yet was all about them obstructing their work and other people interpreting it yeah. in their own distinct way. So from session to session what we planned out is a, a series of outputs. We started off um, with a comfortable medium, we were doing sketching, they do that regularly. And with every session we changed the size of the output, the scale of it and the medium which they use. Virtual realities is the um, the name of it, the name of the crossings event, um, and it's really influenced by, I think, a lot of what we do in our atelier, really, um, and trying to get the essence of remap um, and alternative ways of thinking about place beyond the static object. Trying to get that across to younger members of the school because we found it really valuable since joining the M Arch Atelier. We looked at. Piccadilly Gardens as a sort of hub of Manchester and encourage the students to go to Piccadilly Gardens and look at it in a slightly different way, maybe consider political, social, economic factors as a driving force to create Piccadilly as a site instead of just the more traditional architectural. So uh, the project we're working on is Tatton Narratives and it, it was based in Tatton Park and we got the students to go and visit for the day and everyone looked around and got an idea of the roots. The idea is to, it's all about discovering the site and revealing the memories and revealing the past life and we got them to go around um, and find hints or clues as to how it may have been and therefore um, 
get an idea for the site as it is now but also how it was and we've come back now and we're getting them to analyse the different routes that different people would have taken um, to understand how the site was used by different people at different times and then how this has evolved over time. It's like a site analysis. So it's, it's basically an in-depth site analysis. So they picked up a series of key themes um, and they were each just assigned a theme and they developed a route for their theme or either a person or a theme. So either technology or servants or uh, women. And uh, they developed a series of uh, plans. Well, the idea of ours is that we're looking at sort of mechanisation as opposed to digitisation as a, a process of explaining sort of modernism as opposed to postmodernism. And so we're working with the machine and trying to integrate the machine into the home by, because we see items like a toaster or an oven as sort of appliances you put into the house rather than part of the house itself. And while there's issues there of sort of flexibility, we, uh, we're interested to see how they can integrate with the person more as sort of a phenomenological way of, of feeling them so uh, we used the example before of oh, when you put in a toast in the toaster you sort of press the button down that's sort of a sense of a feeling because you feel the toast go down that, that example just sort of came up through our talking so uh, we wanted to think about that really how um, experience could be brought to the fore in the use of machines the point of our intervention was to put up a pop-up architecture studio in the middle of albert square as an initial talking point to get members of the public engaged with architecture and really start a conversation about what architecture means to them, what they think it can do, and ask for their perceptions. So the students came together on the first day uh, and came up with two tectonic ideas for pavilions that could be used. So one's based on a woven textile cardboard strip, and the other's based on a uh, stick and block arrangement. And uh, both pavilions are going to pick out key viewpoints of the town hall, invite people to look out of them, see what they see, and uh, write about it. Or, get involved in a conversation with us about it. So, so doing this everything by yourself, what was the idea behind it? Why don't you just buy something or why do you build it yourself? We wanted to see what we could use with uh, recycled materials, so it's something cheap and accessible. Well, we're called the Architectural Apprentice. Um, and basically, we've divided our workshop into two parts, as you would say. The first one is about, um, in the first second, you start thinking about site analysis and emotional mapping in a different way, approaching a site differently from normative methods and applying new methodologies and reading spaces differently as opposed to thinking about writing as an architect, more about reading um, and then being able to intervene in a different way and questioning ourselves and to understand what does it mean to intervene differently. The idea is, and to continue on the metaphor of reading and writing, is that you begin by reading a space and then the role of the architect is rather than um, than a writer, it yeah. becomes a translator. So you read the layers, the social, the cultural, the political, the economic layers of the site, and then you translate them into a spatial proposition. So the only thing we're asking from the first and second years is really a brief for a project which results from the site analysis. And it's just them saying, how would, how would they take the space further? Or how would they translate the site? Yeah, what we're doing is our agenda is to build some um, well-crafted uh, brick sculptural walls um, and sort of in an aid to a most and minus site to create a welcoming entrance, um, and a sort, of a, sort of a beer garden. Yeah, I mean the client, the Moston and Miners Club is a growing community arts venue uh, in Moston which is linked to FC United which again is a community venture. Yeah, so we've got a collaborator, Ipstock, who have provided us with 3,200 bricks for free um, and then we've got CPI Mortars has provided us the mortar for that. So it's really good, we haven't had to put too, too much money into that area. And then uh, Stockport College are going to supply the skills needed to create these brick sculptures on this kind of front terraced area. Yeah, and then we're going to get hands and experience from that, hopefully. Um, because for the, the aim of our event really is to teach the students how to work with brick dims, it's become a practice in architecture. Well, our project was called Was Here, and um, we set out to produce... Um, like a limitless number of photographs um, in the northern quarter. So we were using vintage and film cameras and everyone was asked to capture like resili the resilience of the northern quarter and well, they were encouraged to express that in a personal way. So it was a personal interpretation of the topic. Um, we did like group and individual work, but um, the students learned how to use 
film cameras, loading the films, developing and processing them in the dark room. Um, they were collaborating together to produce a wall of photos and then they produced a book as well which had a lot of stories in and things that they'd gathered along the way and a lot of them got talking to people who were like really interesting and the book's amazing it's a really it's a really cool piece of work so it's worth it's a worth a read um the book's simple and it kind of emphasizes everyone's photos so we've we selected about five of people's favorite ones and then five more of like further favorite photos of each person as well. and it allows like a bit of emphasis on that um let's hard and we are looking into making interactive hardings that sort of create relationships between the public and their urban surrounding and as we know hardening is actually part of our urban lives but we just never notice it because it's, it's just there and everybody's too busy and just so concentrated on their lives and busy working so that's our aim and it's going to be a fun event as we are we have a client called New Charter and they actually gave us a site in a housing area and we're really looking forward to sort of engage with the um, the children and the um, residential people that actually live there so yeah it's going to be it's going to be fun we're going to come up with like fun games and hoardings that people can actually play with sit on playing with the idea that uh, how uh, people don't, uh, that can actually engage with the hoarding. The name of the event is the human scale and throughout this event we're trying to explore um, elements of the human and human factors within the built environment and we've taken sort of two sites for the students to explore. One of them is the building, it's a toast rack in the Hollings faculty and the other is just in the city. We've picked an area around the River Irwell in the Spinning Fields area. Um, we found that to be quite an interesting site because there's quite a lot of different scales in the new building, the spinning field, and then the older architecture in Sulphur side. Yeah, and then um, we're also exploring ideas about geometry, art and architecture, and sensory architecture experiences and spaces. So basically, we try to let the students try to experience the sensory of the city, especially. Uh, to see the differences between uh, in, in a building and also in a city, so we can see the difference, the differences between the sense and the scale of the of the the built environment. As well. Our event's called the Manifestation of Memory. Um, we've been collaborating with the Imperial War Museum North, um, obviously a museum that looks very much at collecting of artifacts over uh, several over a long time pe period. Um, and have over time collected a lot, several hundred different artefacts and uh, we wanted to, to mix that with the sort of looking at graphic art, sort of the graphic art by such sort of street artists as Banksy and looking at students to sort of develop their narrative skills, um, picking artefacts in the different artefacts in the museum, um, creating stencils of the artefacts and then working in groups to then combine artefacts and to create, um, sorry, um, Combining stencils from different, obviously, different places around the museums, then create their own unique kind of interpretation uh, of the museum through a sort of a new narrative, through basically a new kind of Banksy kind of style image. Um, so the output for the uh, event will effectively be 24 Banksy style graffiti arts. Um, so it's Gate 81 um, event month and um, it's based on a real live um, design workshop or charrette we're calling it in Preston bus in Preston in the bus station and um, the aim of it is to try and save the bus station from demolition because um, it's currently um, being passed for the demolition by the council um, so with Sally Stone and people in Preston Arts Council we've been fund um, received funding to hold a workshop event there and Lauren's team are currently working on the structure um, getting the scaffolding ready um, the material to hang from the scaffolding um, and designing the actual cloth to go on um, for this sort of, sort of corner of the space in the bus station. Um, I've been doing the physical model, one to 500 model of Preston and the bus station um, so that when we're there, the people that come along, architects, um, just general public, schools, art students come along and they can look at the bus station, the model and figure out sort of all together as a group, you know, other ways of um, using the space without it being demolished. We're looking at different uh, Victorian buildings within the city centre and then um, we've looked at Victoria Bath 
France as well, although it is Georgian. Um, and yeah. we're going to be looking at different uh, Victorian typologies of housing um, later in the event, and they're looking at the spaces and how they can be altered um, through installations, interventions and insertions. And uh, so far we have seen the Victorian uh, Victoria Baths. We had a visit there with the students. It was a very it was a interactive tour there day as well, yeah. And a very fantastic tour they all had there. They saw some Victorian architecture, made a few sketches and had some interaction with the building. So at the moment we're just having a day where they're in the studio and trying to make uh, changes within the space in terms of uh, uh, interventions, insertions and installations. And we also try to organize this event in uh, uh, different places, so we actually we never stay in one place, so we go to uh, different um, different, uh, see different buildings and be in different places. Our event's called Guerrilla Tactics and we're taking the idea of guerrilla marketing um, and we're trying to link the urban environment with, with the public through the vehicle of football and um, essentially we're, gonna be, uh, we're promoting the National Football Museum in Manchester. So we've basically given the students three tasks. The first one is to design a poster advertising the museum, but like with an interactive way about it. Second task is to design a, an installation, like a small installation they'll put into the public realm um, and record people, how they interact with it. And then the third task is to design a large scale installation, which they won't actually build a big, so it can be like really ambitious. And they'll present that in like montage form or video form. And at the end of the event, we'll be um, presenting the three tasks to the National Football Museum. Um, so they have like a little presentation. So it's good for the students because they get to present outside of a school, the architecture setting, uh, and in a more commercial, professional setting. And uh, the work they've done so far is pretty good. We're really impressed. Um, so it's exploring the idea about um, lifetime neighbourhoods and integrating the elderly within the community. So because the overall population um, is growing and people are living longer. Uh, we find this as a problem. So people need to be integrated and they need to continue um, living as active participants in the society. So what we've set um, out as a brief to the students, um, basically we're looking at a site in um, North Manchester, which is the Chetwood Centre. And uh, we're collaborating with a group of elderly Caribbean um, that are resident within the area. So we're looking at the community centre and the space around the centre and how could that be modified so that, one, we keep them as actively participant um, in activities um, in the society, but at the same time we connect that area to the centre of Manchester so we get more visitors and that would obviously raise the awareness of that area, raise more funds for them and then that could ameliorate the whole condition of the area. We are all together taking part in a competition, Forgotten Spaces. We are creating three different ideas. First one is Skyland, Skyland and it is about creating a new vision of Skyland for Preston. In which the competition is taking place, actually. Yes. It is Preston, Forgotten Spaces in Preston. We are doing two, well, no, three, three, three briefs and three entries. Uh, we are going to win the competition, of, of course, and let's now move to our to third take leader. three first prizes. <laughs> so the first prize, second prize, and the third prize. That's why we have three entries, because yeah. we want to take all the money, and that's, that's our goal to and achieve. This is why we hired the best architects from Preston, Mr. Dominique Roberts, which is he, who's here, and we are collaborating with two architects. Uh, trying to, to, to make as, as, as best as possible in, in this project to, to make it happen, the win.